here with her story saying goodbye. Please welcome Karen Benfield. Thank you. Thank you. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> all right. We all have to say goodbye to people that we really love during our lives. But sometimes there's one goodbye that we just never forget. This was the way I said goodbye to my grandmother. Hmm, I didn't see much of my grandmother growing up because I lived on the west coast and she lived on the east. But when she was 98 years of age, I went to see her. She lived upstairs above my aunt and uncle's farm and she gazed into a vast expanse of cornfield and she'd just sit in this old wooden rocking chair and she'd rock back and forth and she'd say to me, Karen, I need you to pray that I die. My husband is gone. My friends are all gone. My quality of life is gone. Please, sweetheart, I need you to pray that I die. And I might have nodded my head, but I know I never said such a prayer because at that age, I didn't know how. The next time I saw my grandmother, she was 102 years old. <laughs> and my father was tending her. She was still living in the same place. And he said, well, you can go in and see her if you want, but she's not going to know you're there. She's just waiting around, doing nothing, waiting to die. And I said, yeah, I want to see her. So I pushed against the wooden door and I felt the familiar resistance of the glass knob as I let myself into her room. And I was so aware of leaving my reality behind and entering the nothingness of hers. The room was very dimly lit and on my left was her bureau. There were her aprons, a jewelry box and do you remember those cloth hankies that women used to use? They had lace and embroidery. How anybody ever blew their nose in those works of art, I can't imagine. But my grandmother had them all pressed in perfect little squares and they were on the edge of her bureau gathering dust. Well, I went around and I opened the window, the curtains to the window, and then, and then I sat by her bed and I began to talk to her. And it was, as my father said, she couldn't hear a word I was saying. But I had brought my flute. And so I unsnapped the case and I assembled the flute and I felt the familiar cold of the metal against my lips as I blew a long, low note. And she startled like this and I was like, yes, I have her. And so I played my first song and as I did, she turned slowly to look at me and she got this big smile on her face. And so I reached out and I touched her lips so that she could feel that I was there. And then I just played and I played and I played and I played until my fingers really could not play anymore. And when I disassembled the flute and I snapped the case shut, she spoke to me for the very first time. She said, Karen, don't go. And I thought, what am I gonna do? I really can't play anymore and she doesn't hear me when I speak. So then I got an idea and I put the flute on the dresser and I pulled back the covers and I got in bed with her. <laughs> and I held her really tight and honestly, she was just a skeleton in a nightdress. And then I put my mouth this close to her ear and I began to sing what at that time was her very favorite song, A Bicycle Built for Two. Mm -hmm. And as I reached the second verse, she surprised me and she began to sing with me. And I cannot describe to you the quality of her voice because she had clearly left her body and was living in another dimension. But she decided to celebrate her life one more time. So she pulled her spirit back and she wrapped it around her like a long lost blanket. And then I sang every song that I knew that she knew. 
And then I just started singing Christmas carols because I didn't know what else to do. And when I thought she was asleep, I let myself out. And I was talking to my father and he said, Karen, do you hear that? And I went, hear what? And he said, come here. So we went back over by her door and he said, she's in there singing all by herself. I have never heard her do that. So this is the last song I ever heard my grandmother sing. And if you would close your eyes and imagine that it's not my voice that you're hearing, but the voice of a woman who's 102 years old. From this valley they say you are going. I will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile. For they say you are taking the sunshine that brightened my path for a while. There are some goodbyes that you can just never forget.